Okay, so thank you everyone for joining us. We have um, today for the Australian Pituitary Foundation, we're very pleased to hold a online webinar, our first webinar for 2022. Uh, we are holding it today, uh, the day after Cushing's Awareness Day. Um, and we're very privileged to have a few speakers with us today, including um, Jack, who is one of our patients uh, with Cushing's disease. Uh, we have uh, Dylan uh, Senebratna Ipa, who is our pituitary endocrinologist. Uh, we have Cecilia Gazelle, who is our radiation oncologist treating um, Cushing syndrome. And I think for the first time in the Pituitary Foundation um, history, we're going to actually have a talk on uh, adrenalectomies as opposed to a transnasal pituitary surgery for our surgical aspect. And I thank um, James Lee for providing that talk for us a bit later on. A very slight background, uh, a lot of you will know that uh, Cushing's disease is a disease where the pituitary gland secretes too much ACTH, which leads to a whole myriad of uh, symptoms. The problem with Cushing's disease is that if left untreated, it can affect life expectancy over uh, by six to eight years. And Cushing's disease itself is rare with about 41 people diagnosed with Cushing's every year. Uh, the diagnosis that you, you will hear of with Cushing's disease is uh, quite uh, can be quite difficult and certainly treatment is not as black and white as just say take medication, just have medical surgery, just have radiation therapy. Okay. So this is what we'll hear about today. Uh, I will ask the audience and when we are speaking if you can turn your microphones off uh, for the talks. There will be opportunities for Q&A at the end. Uh, if you take your, your, your cameras can also be off uh, over the time of, this, of the actual presentations. Uh, the order of presentation today, firstly, will be Jack Forrest, who is our patient who talk us through his patient journey with Cushing's disease. Then we'll go through the medical aspects of, of um, Cushing's disease, the radiosurgical aspects in relation to treatment and a prognosis for Cushing's disease. And as I said, our last speaker is going to talk about the surgical aspects of Cushing's, but not so much from a pituitary perspective, but from the adrenal uh, gland perspective, which is the end organ that does secrete our cortisol, which is the issue that most of the patients with Cushing's um, deal with. Um, the webinar itself will be recorded. It will be recorded. It will be, uh, then it will be placed on our YouTube channel and we'll send out a um, blast when that does occur. If you do have questions to go uh, for uh, our panel, uh, there will be a QA and a specifically at the end, towards the end of this webinar at about 1.40. Happy for you to put the questions into the chat or you can email it directly to the chair.apf at gmail.com and that will be curated into the chats. Uh, our speakers will be on at that period of time to take all questions and comments with that. Okay. So without further ado, our first speaker, as I said, is Jack Forrest. Uh, he, or Jack Budasek, which is actually shown on the screen at the moment. Uh, he is our patient with Cushing's uh, and he's gone through a whole journey, which I think uh, demonstrates the rarity uh, the difficulty with diagnosis and treatment. And I'd like to invite Jack to speak to us. And I think Jack's gonna share his screen, uh, Kim, if you're able to allow that to occur. Thanks. How you going? Thanks, Ian. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep, no worries. I was gonna have a pre-recorded video, but um, I'm just gonna speak. I've had some technical difficulties this morning, but um, yeah, so I'm Jack. Hey everyone, thanks for coming today. And, and I really appreciate um, everyone involved in putting this together. I think the, um, the more awareness we can have for Cushing's, especially, um, the better it's going to help, obviously, the patient and the family and the support team, everyone involved. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, so my, my journey started probably around four years ago, just after I turned 21. And um, I, was, I was not really having many symptoms. It was mainly just... Uh, not being able to sleep and a bit of water retention around the ankles. Um, and that was pretty much it, had low testosterone. They were the three things really. So nothing was really screaming out um, Cushing's from that perspective. Um, so I was obviously having blood tests, you know, every month with my GP and everything was coming back normal because they were just doing, you know, full blood tests and um, not necessarily testing for cortisol or anything abnormally. Um, that way. So I was misdiagnosed for probably a few years, which is quite common to my knowledge, um, which looking back now, it made a lot of sense. But at the time, obviously, um, you know, you can't expect doctors to, to be specialised in, in everything. So 
yeah, there was a lot of misdiagnosis. Um, and it was finally when I was referred to an endocrinologist um, for some testosterone gel that uh, he thought he would do a brain scan to try and figure out what was causing the, the low testosterone. And it, that um, yeah, they found a, a lesion, like a tumor on the brain, on the pituitary gland, which is like the size of a pea. Um, and I just remember being told that at the time I was in Aubrey, which was about an hour from home and my, my family were interstate. Um, so I was on the phone to my mom and I just remember telling her and like, you know, it was, it sounds weird, but I was relieved at, at the same time to know that I wasn't going crazy, that there was potentially something actually, you know, going on. Cause obviously, um, I'd been told for the last few years that, um, there was nothing wrong with me. So I was relieved at the time. I didn't know it was Cushing's. All I knew was there was a, a growth, um, and then from there, there was a lot of testing involved um, down at St. Vincent's Hospital in trying to figure out if, if the tumour was actually causing the issue, which they found, obviously, with elevated cortisol in the urine, morning cortisol was elevated, um, and a number of other testing. Um, the final test, I guess, that, that put the pieces together was the, I forget what it's called, but I'll, I'll, you're laying on a table and they, they are putting catheters up up in the groin into the vein in the jugular here and they're taking blood samples um, from the pituitary gland and whilst they injected with different hormones and I guess that's got a very high success rate with, with giving you a, a positive, um, a, a, you know, being diagnosed, positive diagnosis of, of Cushing. So that was, I guess, when the penny dropped and, and you know, I was given the official diagnosis of, of Cushing's disease, um, which to be honest is, quite confronting you, you go home and you google and you have a, a bit of a research into what it does to the body and, and, and the long-term prognosis of it like Ian was talking about earlier and yeah it's not really what anyone wants to hear regardless of their age but um, I was very lucky that I had uh, you know I was young and I was fit and I was able to sort of you know take tackle it head on I didn't know I was going to be a journey like this I thought it would be over a bit a bit quicker than this but um yeah, from there, uh, I had a few options as to whether I had uh, surgery or radiation or, um, you know, had half the pituitary taken out or the adrenals taken out. And I, I guess I had a really good conversation with Carmela Caputo, who was my endocrinologist and still is today. Like she's uh, made my journey far easier than what it could have been. She's an amazing person. And um, if you do see this, Kamala, thank you. Um, I know you're on maternity leave, but I, do, I appreciate your ability to be there for me whenever I need you. So thank you. Um, so I guess the, the options were laid out to me on a table. And for me, the lowest risk with the highest potential for re, you know, reward being remission was surgery. So uh, when was it? It was June of 2020 when I had my first surgery. Um, and my levels did come down post-surgery, but not to, um, I guess, the levels that they were supposed to. They were more so of a normal level, whereas they should have dropped below that. And I guess a few weeks after that, I was feeling pretty good. And then testing, uh, say three months after that, it revealed that it, it had come back. Um, cortisol was elevated again. And yeah, I guess I was given another set of options in regards to do I do surgery again do I have radiation or do I yeah, have the pituitary gland taken out and, and the same decision was made to have another surgery so I did that in November so six months later that year and yeah same result unfortunately um, I remember sitting in the chair with my dad he was there at the time and being told that it, yeah, it looks, obviously we didn't know at the time, but it looks like it, it was not successful. Um, and that was definitely the hardest out of the entire journey, the hardest day of my life by far, um, just due to the fact that I felt like I had, you know, had exhausted my options in regards to trying to, you know, resolve my health issues. So that was tough, but I found the only way I was going to be able to move forward was I threw myself back into work. So I moved back on the farm, went full-time with work, studied, um, 
and shut myself off really for six months to try and just get myself in a good headspace again, which I did. And I think that personally made such a big difference. It really enabled me to, to um, look at it from a fresh perspective rather than why me what, as a victim, which is not going to get you anywhere. So six months on, I was sort of placed with two or three options, whether I have radiation or I have the adrenals taken out, which um, I just, yeah, I just had to pick the, the lesser of two evils for me personally, and that was radiation. Um, there was risks, obviously, I spoke to the radiologist, there's risks with everything, but for me, that was my decision. And now I'm coming up 12 months post radiation. Um, I can speak briefly on that. That was really quite a, uh, well, the experience was, as good as it could be. I walked in, had my mask done one day, and then a few months later, I went in to the, the Epworth at Richmond and the team there were amazing, um, so obliging and, and made sure that I was you know, not, not uncomfortable. So I was in and out sort of in 20 minutes, um, felt the same as, as I did when I walked in and um, not much had changed from that day until about a month ago when I started to get Hives, I started to sleep a bit better. Um, swelling had subdued a little bit. And, you know, so I had some testing done. And it looks like my levels have dropped dramatically over half. They're not into full remission as of yet, but um, they're, yeah, they're, they're of, of what I guess a normal person's levels should be. So uh, my endocrinologist thinks that it's sort of a relative deficiency since my body's been functioning at such high cortisol levels for so long. It's, um, yeah, since it's over half, my body's just reacting to that. So it's looking like hopefully over the next few months, whether it's six or 12 months, that some form of remission does take place. And, um, you know, hoping that the pituitary is able to fire on its own uh, rather than, you know, being on long-term steroids. But yeah, that's all ahead of me. I don't know what, what that's going to look like, but um, yeah, I, 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 as Ian has, has mentioned, I've gone through almost uh, the entire process. Hopefully that this, this is the last process for me and, and I, I'm able to um, move forward with, with my life. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, I just wanted to mention a few things that really helped me along the way was obviously with Cushing's, a lot of people struggle with um, the, you know, the self-image issues that come with potentially the weight gain and things like that. And I found, you know, I'm now four kilos heavier than I started four years ago. And I think it's enabled me to, um, I guess, not hide it because I, I, I kind of was embarrassed at the time, but um, live somewhat of a normal life. And I think I was talking to my partner last night, Melissa, saying that, you know, keeping active and keeping, if you're able to keep working and, and living somewhat of a normal life is really going to put you in a good place if you ever do get into a remission um, position so that you can just go back to, you know, living your life before your Cushing's journey started. Um, that was, yeah, I'd say that was really important for me and making sure that you have a great, great support network. I'm very blessed that that my family and my friends were there for me, still are. And um, it's definitely made, made the process of, which is a really tough process. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say here it's, that it's, it's not a long slog because it is, but um, having those people on your side really does help. Um, and yeah, I, I, I'm here, I'm, I'm 25 and hopefully, you know, I can say I'm in remission over the next six to 12 months. And, um, yeah, I live an amazing life and, and Cushing's hasn't, you know, haven't let that change it. So, um, yeah, if anyone's got any questions after, I will be here for the Q&A and, and, yeah, thanks for your time. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Jack, for your really quite personal discussion of your journey and your talk. Um, the, I think that what I get out of this is someone who has uh, gone through the whole journey that we talk about. And there are patients with Cushing's who are lucky, I guess, in a way, who have one treatment, one surgery, and they're in remission. But Cushing's, as part of the pituitary tumour 
uh, the bundle that we have, Cushing is the one condition whereby it would seem a, a vast amount of patients will go through a long diagnosis and multiple treatment options. Uh, I will put my hand up and say that I was I operated on Jack twice, and I did not get uh, we did not get remission with Jack's surgery. We talk about uh, remission with surgery itself being about you know 60 70 percent of remission rates uh, in in most circumstances, and certainly we did not get remission with Jack, which was disappointing both for Jack and me. And I just um, and what hits me as a as an, I guess as a neurosurgeon, as a doctor, is that the disappointment and how it can really affect people's mental state as well when you actually, you know, when you put your uh, hope in the fact that the actual treatment is going to help you and you come back twice and it didn't. And just, I guess I'm quite amazed at the way that you, Jack, can actually just move on and say, okay, draw yourself in the work, get on to the next thing and how to go, things like that. Um, one point I do take is that you said that when you look at the next options of radio surgery versus taking out half the gland or taking out the adrenal glands you went for the easier or the lesser option as you say i'd be interested to see our speakers later about what they feel about that in terms of radio surgery versus adrenalectomies it might be quite interesting to see their thought process on that um, i will repeat again if anyone has any questions uh, you can put them in the chat and we can actually uh, address them at the q a towards the end uh, but otherwise, if there's no comments now, uh, I will move on to our next speaker okay, who has just dropped off. I can, oh, there he is. Uh, so the, um, the, if I may move on to Dylan, if Dylan, if you can um, unmute yourself and pop your camera on.